Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. There is power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There's no other name I know. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. Well, there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in Rebuke to the power 
In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. We certainly do thank God uh, for another day's journey, as we've said, and another opportunity to get into the Word of God. Amen. We praise God for our lovely wife, Lady Tracy Quinn, and we thank God for Christian ministries, and we thank God um, that given us an opportunity to stand here um, uh, behind this sacred desk as we uh, begin to get into the Word of God. Uh, the Lord wants me to switch uh, streams, so to speak. I'm, I know we've been talking about vision, and we're not done with that yet, but uh, the Lord wants me to talk about another subject on tonight, and let us uh, prepare our hearts and our minds for that. I want you to turn with me to the uh, book of uh, St. Matthew, St. Matthew chapter 22. St. Matthew chapter 22. And uh, as we are beginning to turn to St. Matthew chapter 22, uh, we want to uh, talk about uh, love. We want to talk about love. And uh, love has been described as a multitude of things. And when we uh, really think about love and having it connected with God, it deals with agape love. Agape love is that unconditional, unconditional type of love. Um, the Bible teaches us that there's three types of love. Philos, which means brotherly love, and then there's um, uh, agape love, and then there's that uh, romantic type of love. And that's the type of love that a man and a wife should have one for another. But that agape love is the love that God is after tonight. That's the love that God is after tonight. And as we begin to look at our scriptures here uh, in St. Matthew chapter 22, uh, this is actually a great chapter uh, where Jesus himself shut the mouths of the gainsayers. Uh, there was a question asked to him by the Sadducees about uh, a man having a wife and uh, she died and he married another and so forth and so on. And they asked him uh, in the end whose wife should she be uh, when they all get to heaven. And Jesus straightened that question out. And then uh, in Matthew 22, verse 34, the Bible says, But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they gathered together. And verse 20, 35, it says, Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question not with good intentions, but tempting him and saying, Master, what is the great commandment in the law? So the question is, what is the great commandment in God's law? And I, I like Jesus' answer because he was straightforward. Noted, normally when an individual was tempting Jesus, he could sense and tell their heart, he would uh, ask a question with a question. But here, he straightforwardly answers the question. Jesus answered and said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And verse 38, he says, This is the first and great commandment. This is number one. And he said, and the second is like unto it, like unto it. He said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And verse number 40 says, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So we have to ask the question, why are these the greatest commandments? Why? Are these the greatest commandments? 
questions. And in answering that question, you have to think about who God is and your service to God. And what Jesus said in verse 40, all of these, these two, love, hinges on all the law and the prophets. Everything the law teaches and everything the prophets have taught hang on love, hang on love. So how does one, the question is, how does one love God? How does one love God? And another question we're going to attempt to answer tonight is how does one love thy neighbor? How does one love thy neighbor? So there's two important questions that are on the table that we want to bring insight in, into. The first one being, uh, how does one love God? And the second one being, how does one love thy neighbor? And looking at the first question, First question, Jesus literally took his answer uh, when it said that from that verse 37, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. He took his first question uh, and answered that lawyer's question from the book of Deuteronomy. Let's go over there real quick. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 6. And I want to begin looking at verse number 1. Deuteronomy, chapter number 6, and literally verse number 1. In, in this chapter, it outlines the greatest commandment. And this is where Jesus took his first answer from. And notice what it says in Deuteronomy chapter number 6 and verse number 1. It says, now these are the commandments and the statutes and the judgment which God, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whether you go to possess it. So God is telling his people that, that I want you to teach these commandments. And, and one principle we have to learn about love is we have to be taught how to love. Love isn't natural. It, 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 it's, it's been corrupted through our own nature that we received from Adam. And, and so true love has to be taught. And, and that true love is taught by God's commandments. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Because people, uh, one, one other principle we have to learn about love, love is a choice. I can choose to love or I can choose to hate. Love is a choice. You can choose to love and you can choose to hate. And, and that's why love is, is taught uh, as well as hate is taught. Uh, people or children growing up, they, they don't normally or naturally hate other races or, or prejudice. They're taught how to be prejudiced. They're taught how to be racist, as well as uh, uh, taught how to love right. Taught, taught how to love. Taught uh, uh, what is God's requirement of love. And that's what God wants uh, for his people. He wants his people to be taught how to love. Amen? So, so we see here then, verse number 2, Deuteronomy, verse number uh, 6, uh, cha uh, chapter number 6, rather, and verse number 2. He says, the reason why I want you to be taught how to love is that so that thou might fear the Lord thy God. That word fear there means to reverence God. Not to fear and tremble uh, or be afraid to approach him, but to reverence or hang on his every word. To, to receive every word of God as, as necessary. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth 
out of the mouth of God. You reverence the Lord thy God. Notice then, he says, to keep all his statutes and to keep all his commandments, which I command thee, that thy and thy sons and thy sons' sons, all the day of your life. God wants you to love him and keep his word all the day of your life. There should never be a break in your uh, loving God. There should never be a break in your reverencing God. It should be continual like his love towards you is continual. Your love towards him has to be continual. Amen? Without a break. No matter what happens, no matter what goes on, your love for God remains. Not, not, it's not based on your circumstance. It's not based on what you're going through, but it's based on who he is and your relationship with him. Hallelujah. My God. That's a mouthful there. Thank you, Lord. You don't, you don't just love God because of the fishes and the loaves and the blessings. Because what if the blessings stop? Then your, does your love stop? You love God because he's gracious, because he's merciful, hallelujah, because he's kind, amen, because he's God, hallelujah. You set your affection upon him because of who he is. God is a provider. God is a way maker. God is a very present help. Not only that, because, but also because he loves you. Amen. Hallelujah. In the same way. God doesn't love you in a conditional way. Hallelujah. He loves you unconditionally. The Bible says that when we were in our uh, trespasses and sins, thank you, Lord, uh, God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Hallelujah. God loves us. Thank you, Lord, unconditionally. So uh, uh, that, that has huge implications because there's, there's nothing that you can do, hallelujah, that, that God uh, won't forgive you for. There's nothing that you can do that God uh, will, will be offended at you wherein he, he, he stops his love towards you. Amen? Hallelujah. God loves you at all times. Thank you, Lord. Now, Let's move on. Verse number three. Um, uh, verse number three, Deuteronomy 6 and 3. Notice what it says. Hear therefore, listen, incline your ear, O Israel, and observe to do it, that, that it may be well with thee. Uh, keep God's commandments. Love God. Amen. Reverence God so it, can, it, it benefits you. Amen? It benefits you so it can be well with you. Set your affection on God so that it benefits you. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So it can be well with thee that thou mayest what? Increase uh, as the Lord your God, as the Lord uh, God of thy fathers have promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Now here we go. The first question was, how do I love the Lord? And here we are. This is the answer to that question. This is how I love the Lord. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter number four, uh, chapter number six, I'm sorry, chapter number six and verse number four. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with what? All thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be where? In, In thine heart. This particular prayer is called the Shema prayer. And the children of Israel were to learn this prayer from a youth up. And they would literally quote this prayer uh, several times a day so that it can 
enter into their heart so that it can enter into their heart. They would quote this prayer several times a day so that we need to then, if we're going to love God the way we ought to love Him with all our heart, with all our might, with all our soul and our strength, we need to quote this prayer every day, several times a day. Amen? So it can enter into our heart. Let me say that again. Thank you, Lord. Let me say that again. If, if we want to truly love God the, the way that God intends us to love Him, we have to quote this prayer, Deuteronomy chapter number 6 and verses 4 through uh, verses 4 and 5, truly. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt what? Love the Lord thy God with what? All thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And we have to allow that prayer to enter into our heart. Now, let me just say, I'm going to say two things when I say let it into, enter into your heart. We have a mind, amen, where we think. And then we have a heart. Uh, the, the mind is, is, I'm going to say, is the, uh, how can I say it? Lord, help me here. The mind is the first gate where things enter into your way of thinking. When things enter into your heart, that's the next step uh, where an individual really does an action. You don't do everything that entered into your mind. A lot of crazy stuff comes to our mind that we don't do. Amen? But when it enters into your heart, when it enters into that second realm of, of thinking, that's your heart. That's what you do. Amen? Uh, James put it this way. He says, uh, uh, when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. When sin or the evil thought enters into your heart, if it's evil, uh, yeah, the individual has to uh, uh, bring forth the action. It's like uh, when a woman conceives in her body and she conceives a child, that's considered the heart. And, and she's going to, sooner or later, bring forth that which she has conceived. Amen? So that's why it's important to allow the love of God uh, to enter into your heart. Uh, because if it enters into your heart, you'll perform it. Hallelujah. And that's what, that's what God wants. He doesn't necessarily uh, only want you to, to think about Him, but He wants you to perform the actions and the deeds that are associated with Him. Amen? That's why he said, Hallelujah, if, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If, if, if you love me in your heart, you'll follow after my ways. Amen? So we see here then. Notice what he said. He said, Hear, O Israel, we're going back up to verse number three. I'm, I'm sorry, verse number um, uh, four. He said, hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, is what? One Lord. The reason why God is identifying himself as one Lord is because Israel is coming from the land of Egypt. And the land of Egypt, they serve multiple gods. Amen? That's the reason why they established those ten plagues. Those ten plagues that God uh, uh, attacked them with, uh, they were uh, literally attacking their gods. 
That's why God did that. If you never knew that, that's the reason why God did that. He was attacking their gods. Amen? Because they were, they were not monotheistic. Monotheistic means to worship one God. They were polytheistic, which means they served multiple gods. Amen? God is establishing himself as one and only true God. Remember when he went down there, Moses said, who should I say that you are that sent me? Huh? And God identified himself. He told him, say that I am, uh, that I am. Amen? That, 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 that I'm the all-existing one. That, that there's no one else beside me. And I'm God all by myself. Amen? Hallelujah. So that God's first commandment is, thou shalt not have, what? Any other gods, what? Before me. God's second commandment is, that thou shalt not make any graven images. Am I right? And God's third command is, Hallelujah, that thou shalt not take the name of thy Lord, thy God, what? In vain. Thank you, Lord. And the fourth commandment is, thank, thank you, Lord, that, 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 that you should keep the Sabbath day. Hallelujah. And honor it. In other words, section out a time where you can worship me uh, and me alone. Give me reverence. Hallelujah. Honor me. Thank you, Lord. Because why? I'm, I'm the God that brought you out. I'm the God that gave you life. And there's no other God like me. God says, I was no other God like me. And I'm a jealous God. Because nobody else can do like I do. Hallelujah. So that God, that's why God wants you to love him exclusively. Amen. Now, how do you love God exclusively? Hallelujah. Him and him alone. Uh, that's the next verse. What does it say? And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with what? All thine heart. What? All thy soul. And what? All thy might. The operative word there is all, isn't it? Uh, hallelujah. That means that, that literally... This is what that means. God is first and everything else is last and it's not second because of his second is competing with God. Hallelujah. God does not want your love to compete. Nothing in your life to compete with him. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to love God exclusively. Am I right? Now, now, how do I love God exclusively? I got to love God exclusively with all my heart. Amen. Now, when the Bible there speaks of heart, it's talking about your, 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 your will, your, your intellect. Huh? It's talking about your emotions. Thank you, Lord, with your affections. You follow me? That's huge. That, that the Bible teaches us that we ought to set our affections uh, what we love on things where? Above. Uh, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. So, so, so everything I love uh, has to be connected and centered around God. Uh, let me say that again. A lot of people can catch that. Thank you, Lord. Everything that I love, everything that you love has to have God in the center. Uh, if it doesn't, it can lead to corruption. If it doesn't, it can lead to lead to uh, 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 me falling short. And notice, it says all, uh, not part, all. You can't, you can't. Uh, 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 how can what the Bible tells us? We can't, we can't uh, uh, love money and love God. Am I right? <laughs> you follow me? Y'all believe that? Yeah. Doesn't the Bible teach that? You can't love money and love God. Why? The love of money is what? The root. The root. The root of what? All. all. He said all evil. Thank you, Lord. Love of money is the root of all evil. I can't, I can't, I can't love God and them. 
Uh, the, the mammon there, it means money, finances. Okay? I can't, can't give. He says, what shall a man, uh, how, how can a man, uh, uh, what shall a man give in what? In exchange for his soul. Follow me? Hallelujah. Now notice this. He says, I gotta love God with all my heart. And then he says, I gotta love God with all my what? Soul. All my soul. Follow me? All my soul. Your soul is your total being. It's your personality. It's who you are. Your conscience. Your subconscious. Amen? That's your soul. It's, it's, it's who you are. Your, your, it's, it's what makes you you. When, you. when you look at me, when I look at you, I don't see your soul. Your soul is housed within you. And, and that's your personality. That's your conscience. That's who you are. Man, that's kind of deep if you think about it. Hallelujah. It's who you are. And, and your body houses your soul so that, so that you can operate here on this earth. Your soul is spiritual because it comes from God. Amen? And at one time, your soul was eternal. And, and when Adam and Eve sinned, your soul became mortal. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So when Jesus died, that's the reason why he came to this life, this earth. Amen. To restore you so that so that your soul can, can be eternal. Amen? Now, now let, me, let me go back from what I was saying. Thank you, Lord, so, so we can have perfect understanding. That's what, that's what uh, uh, Luke wrote in his, in, his, in his book, in Luke uh, chapter number one. And he told old Theophilus, having perfect understanding. Amen. So that's what we need. We need to have perfect understanding of what I'm saying. Your soul has always been eternal. Uh, that, that, that it's going to live on forever because it comes from God. Amen. Now, when, when Adam sinned, when he sinned, Instead of your soul spending uh, uh, eternal eternity with God, there, there's another place that sinners spend their, I don't want to say their life, but eternity. Amen? And separation is, is what we call the lake of fire. Amen? You don't want to end up there. That's eternal separation. That's damnation. Amen? Now, Jesus came to give your soul eternal life. And, and that's where you spend eternity with God. Amen? Hallelujah. But, but I want you to catch what I'm trying to say. Your soul is eternal because it comes from God. Where you spend eternity... Uh, is up to you. If you keep God's commandments, you'll spend eternity with Him. If you if you choose not to love God and keep His commandments, you'll spend eternity eternally separated from Him. That's what the word perish means. Doesn't mean die in the sense that we mean die. It just means it really means to be eternally separated from God. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Thank you, Jesus. Now, uh, 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 that's a bonus. I didn't come here for that. <laughs> but but let, us, let, us, let, us, let us reason together. When the scripture says, love the Lord thy God with all thy soul, he's talking about loving God with your total being. 
your consciousness, your subconsciousness, with everything that you are. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Loving with your imaginations, your creativity, amen? Your thoughts, amen? Your total being. Now, he says also, too, that love him with all your might. And that word might there means with, with your strength, your efforts. Everything you do is an expression of the love of God. Amen? Everything that you do is an ex outward expression of your love of God. Now, when it says love God with all your might, uh, uh, me smoking cigarettes is not an expression of my love of God. Me, me, me picking up a gun and killing you out of anger is not an expression of my love of God. My, me cussing you out is not an expression of my love of God. Amen? Me doing evil it, with, with, with the strength and the might that God has given me, the breath that God has put in my body is not an expression of my love of God. Y'all follow me? So when he's talking about your might, he's talking about using literally your energy, huh? your, your ability to walk and talk, your ability to use your hands and your feet, your eyes, everything that takes strength. Use it as an expression of God's love. That's why I said, don't let your feet be swift to run the mischief. Amen? Uh, that's why he says, whatever you yield your members to obey, your members, your hands, your feet, your eyes, that's whose servant you are, to whom you obey. Hallelujah. So, so if, if, if I love God, I'm going to use my faculties, my hands, my, my, my eyes, my, my feet. Hallelujah. Everything that requires strength, I'm going to use it to the expression of God's love. Uh, it'll be like poetry in motion. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, that helps us to answer that why question of, of how, how does one love God? Amen? If you're going to love God, you've got to love him with what? All your what? All your heart, all your soul, and all your might. With everything. Amen? Hallelujah. Love him with everything. Am I right? And, and how do you do that? That has to be taught. Amen? What, what do you teach? You teach God's commandments. Amen? Hallelujah. You've got to know what God requires. That's how you love God. What I said earlier about um, we don't naturally, you may think that you do, but you don't naturally know how to love the way that God would have you to love. You have to be taught that. Amen? Like I said earlier, people are taught how to hate. In other words, let's look at it this way. When you come into this world, you're kind of like a blank slate. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, 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 it's, and, and your parents or your, your first instructors are really those that raise you. Whether or not they're your biological parents or those that, that, that raise you. And they are the ones that, that help mold you and make you and shape you. Amen? It would be better and beneficial to be raised by somebody that knows God's commands. Uh, that, that is able to teach God's word. Amen? So, so that's why this Shema prayer is so important. That's why uh, when Jesus was asked 
What is the first uh, or the greatest commandment? That's why Jesus went here to this book. That's why he went here to, to, to this scripture. Hallelujah. Because he realized that this is the greatest. And if you, if you follow after this, if you, if you quote this, and you allow it to be in your heart, you won't have any problem with loving God. Y'all with me? Amen. Now notice what he said. Hallelujah. Notice what he said. Verse number five. Then we're going to move on to the second question. Verse number, let me go with verse number four. He said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is what? One Lord. One Lord. One, Lord. One God. Amen. Not monotheistic. I mean, he's monotheistic, not polytheistic. Poly, P, poly means uh, more. Mono means what? One. Notice, he said, and thou shalt what? Love the Lord thy God with what? All, all your heart. All your, all your soul. All your and all your mind. All your heart represents your will, your intellect, your emotions, your, your feelings, your affections. Amen? And your soul represents your total being, who you are, your conscience. Amen? Yourself. Hallelujah. And your might literally means your, your, your strength, your outward expression. Hallelujah. Your movements, the deeds that you do reflect your love for God. All right? Now notice. Uh, verse number six, what does it say? And these words shall what? Which I command thee, this day shall what? Be in your, these words. Amen? I said that they quoted this on a daily basis, several times a day. These words. I'm going to love God with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind. I'm going to love God. Uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is what? One Lord. Love the Lord thy God with what? All your, all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And you got to quote it on a daily basis. Huh? huh? Several times a day so it can be where? In your heart. Amen? And your heart is not your blood pump. Your heart is the seat of your mind. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, it, 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 it is. Your first line of defense is your mind. Your second, uh, what things enter into, is your heart. Amen? That's, that's housed here. Huh? Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Uh, Stop talking about your blood pumper. Hallelujah. This, this is that physical heart. Huh? And your physical heart is, is where life happens, doesn't it? Huh? Your, your mental heart is where life happens. Huh? So a man thinketh in his, so is he. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, notice. Notice then. I just want to move forward. Uh, verse number six. He says, in these words, which I command thee, shall be where? In thy heart. Right? Verse number seven. And he says, and, and shall teach them what? Diligently. Who? To who? Unto thy children. So you got to teach your children how to love. That's why I said that, that love is a choice. Hate is a choice that is taught. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. You got to teach people how to love. Amen? There's a scripture that in the New Testament that says for the younger women, uh, for the older women to teach the younger women how to love their husbands. Amen? Teach. You got to teach. Amen? You got to teach uh, people how to love their children. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You got to teach people how to love God. Am I right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And, and how do you teach it? You teach it by 
giving yourself over to God's word. Now notice what he said. How often should I be giving myself over to the word of God? Now notice what he said. Verse 7, and thou shalt teach them, them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy head, thy hand, and thou shalt uh, be as frontless between thine eyes. Thou shalt write them upon thy post of thy house, on thy gates, and it shall be, uh, I'm going to stop right there, verse number 9, alright? Now, he's saying this, that, notice what he said, thou shalt, verse number 7, thou shalt teach them unto thy children, and in the next part of that verse, thou shalt talk of them, how often? When I sit in thy house, amen, notice, and when you walk by the way, when you're walking down the street, you're talking about God's love uh, and, and his commandments. When you lie down, uh, when, before you go into bed, you're talking about God's commandments. And notice, uh, verse number eight, you, you, you write them upon your hand, uh, you put them on your forehead, uh, and uh, uh, and you write them on the post of your house and, and on your gate. So literally he said, you should be dealing with the word of God 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Amen? Do y'all believe that? Amen. That's what he said. Huh? If you really want to walk with God and, and, and live for him, you have to put him first and give him all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's the love of God. That's the requirement. Amen? Because the enemy is shrewd. Some people, some of y'all probably thinking, well, uh, Pastor, I should be spiritual all the time. Yes! If you carnal, you go sin go in or in. The devil gonna get you. Well, Pastor, does that mean I can't go bowling? Uh, does that mean I can't go to the movies? Does that mean I, I can't uh, uh, do this and do that? No, that doesn't mean you can't do that. But if you go do that, keep it holy. Amen? Keep it holy. People talking about crazy, stupid stuff. You don't get into that conversation. You keep it holy. Why? Because God is holy. Well, Pastor, you know, I like to sin a little bit sometimes. <laughs> huh? God said, a little leaven does what? Leaven the whole love. I got to be holy because God's holy. Amen? Now, if I, if, if I realize these things, and I'm realizing it that it's for my own good, it's for my benefit. Am I right? Hallelujah. My God. And, and people that don't understand these things, they, they don't understand the love of God. Hallelujah. My God. All right. Let's move on. Y'all with me? Y'all got that? All right, now let's work on Jesus' second, second uh, portion of his question. So we understand then how I am to love God. How does one love God? I, I love God with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my what? Might. And how am I taught that? I'm taught that through his what? His word or his commandment. Amen? And his word and his commandments have to be where? In my heart. heart. Oh, y'all got it. Go on, get God for you. All right. It's good. Woo All right. All right. Now, let's move on. The second portion of Jesus' answer to the question. Let's go back over there to the question. 
Uh, in the book of Matthew, we almost done. In the book of Matthew, chapter, what is it? Chapter 22? Matthew 22 in verse, uh, uh, I'm going to drop down, I'm going to drop down uh, to 36. He says, Master, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And uh, 38, and he says, this is the first and greatest commandment. Verse 39, he says, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor, what? As thyself. And on these two commandments hang the law and the prophets. Now, Jesus was a scriptorial man. Amen? And he understood the importance of the word of God. So the question on the table now is, uh, how do I love my neighbor as myself? How do I love my neighbor as myself? So to get the answer to that question, because uh, uh, the word of God is line on line, precept on precept. Right. Scripture explain scripture. That's why uh, in, 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 in the book of Timothy, it tells you to study God's word. Amen? Uh, let's go over to the book of uh, Leviticus. The Torah. Amen? Consists of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and what? Deuteronomy. That's the Torah, the law. <laughs> Verse 19, Leviticus 19. Leviticus was the priestly book. Thank you, Lord. Meant to inspire worship. God has a whole book of worship. Amen? Uh, and how to conduct yourself in worship. God has a whole hymnal, doesn't he? What's God's hymnal? Amen. The book of Psalms. Woo we we getting it, boy. I like it. Uh, uh, Leviticus uh, chapter 19. And um, I just I just like this. This ain't where we're gonna be, but I just like reading this because I like it. Amen. Uh, Leviticus 19 and 1. It says, the Lord Speak unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the, all the children of Israel, and say unto them, What? Ye shall be what? Holy. For what? I am the Lord your God, and what? Holy. Amen? Didn't, didn't Jesus repeat that? He repeated that in, in the book of St. Matthew, uh, what God said, Be holy, for I am holy. Amen? That's, that's, that's why we ought to love God. Uh, that's why we ought to serve God. That's why we ought not to allow carnality to enter into our lives. We don't serve a carnal-minded God. Amen? But yet, God is loving. God, God has a sense of humor. Amen? God is fair. God is just. Am I right? Thank you, Lord. When I want to give into my flesh, that's that's what wants to party. Uh, not God. Uh, not, not in the sense of, when I say party, to do evil and wicked things. Amen? Hallelujah. We should hate evil. Am I right? And, and love righteousness. In other words, I should hate that which is evil and love that which is right. Uh, amen? That's what righteousness means. Loving that which is right. Right behavior. Amen? Hallelujah, my God. Y'all with me? I, don't that just, don't that just make you happy? Mm -hmm. Knowing that God said, be holy, be separate, amen? Be holy, 
For I am what? Holy. Thank you, Lord. Now, let's drop down where I really want to answer that question. How does one love thy neighbor? That's the question on the table. Amen? So let me take the next uh, 15 minutes explaining that to you. Amen. Drop down then to verse number 9. When you have it, say amen. amen. In order to love your neighbor, amen, uh, it's an action. It's an action. Notice what he said, verse number 9. He says, and when you reap the harvest of the land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of the field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of the harvest. Verse number 10, And thou shalt not glean the, field, the vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of the vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor, and the stranger. I am the Lord. What? Your God. Your God. So in order for me to love my neighbor, loving my neighbor has, especially in the Old Testament, it, it deals with certain responsibilities. In order for me to love my neighbor, it comes with a moral responsibility and it comes with a, a, a social obligation. Y'all got that? Yeah. Me loving my neighbor, it comes with a moral ob, a, a, a obligation and a social obligation. Now let me explain what I'm saying. We don't practice this today. Uh, when I say we, I'm talking about people living in community. Uh, here who, uh, how many people here know uh, at least five of your neighbors that live in your block? That know, that you know five of them? All right, good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Talking about houses, different houses. People that live next to you. Amen. People live across the street from Sometimes it's like every man to his own tent. <laughs> I keep to myself, you keep to yourself. You leave me alone, I leave you alone. Uh, but that's not the way God would have it. Back in the Old Testament, there was a moral obligation that, that, and, and a social responsibility. Notice the rest of God's Ten Commandments. Honor your mother and your father. Am I right? Thou shalt not what? Kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not keep, uh, commit adultery. Thou shalt not bear false witness. And thou shalt not what? Cover. Those, those last six commandments deal with my relationship with man. Deal with my relationship with my neighbor. Amen? And uh, generally speaking, those obligations, they come from God. That's why it's moral. Amen? God is a moral God. What I mean by moral, God has values. God has ethics. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. My God. God is just. God is fair. God wants you to have morals. He wants you to have values. Amen? And he wants you to be driven by your morality. Be driven by your justiceness. Your fairness. Amen? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. But if, 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 if God wants you, God has... When you talk about morality, we're talking about principles. God has principles that, that he won't be corrupted by money to violate. You should have principles that you wouldn't be corrupted to violate. 
morality, justice, fairness. Amen? Y'all with me? This, this morality, this justice, this fairness, it, it comes with equality. You treat everybody equal. Amen? You look down on no man, no woman. Amen? You, you're there to lift people up, to help people. Huh? Thank you. That's that, that's that, it's, it's, it's described in the Bible as an obligation. I owe it to you. Hallelujah. Uh, that's why the James puts it this way. He says, how can you say you love God, uh, who you cannot see, and, and hate your brother and sister, uh, who is made in the image and the likeness of God. How dwelleth the love of God in you? You, you with me? So it's an obligation. Hallelujah, my God. Me treating you right is an obligation. I'm obligated to treat you right. It's not a choice. It's an obligation. That's why that's why uh, 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 it's so much an obligation. I want y'all to hear me. It's so much an obligation. Jesus said in his model prayer that, 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 that he said, uh, Our Father, which art in heaven, what? Hallowed be thy name. Thy what? Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it were, is in heaven. Give us this day our what? Daily bread, huh? And and forgive us of our what? Debts or our trespasses, how? As we, As we forgive others. Obligation. Amen. Me receiving forgiveness is based on me forgiving you. Amen. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall what? Obtain, Obtain what? Mercy. mercy. Obligation. That's huge. Y'all with me? I'm obligated. My blessings depend on how I treat you. Your blessings depend on how you treat me. My blessings don't depend on, my blessings don't depend on how you treat me. My blessings depend on how I treat you. And I'm obligated, huh, to treat you right. Moral responsibility. Amen? It's a moral responsibility and a social obligation. All right, now notice, notice, let's move on. First he said, verse 9 and 10, he said, when you're cleaning food, leave some for the poor, for the have-nots. Am I right? Notice what he said. Verse number 11, ye shall not what? Steal. Don't take from your brother or sister. This is how I love my name. I don't take from my brother or sister. Neither deal with them what? Falsely. So I don't, I don't, I don't uh, go around lying to them. Amen. I don't go around, around uh, go around lying to people. But what about a little, a little white lie? What about a little no harm lie? All liars are going to have what? <laughs> Hey, God is against all lies. Am I right? Huh? So, so, so in order for me to, to, to deal with people and love my neighbor, uh, I got to treat people right. Can't be lying to them. Amen? That's what he said. That's what he said. You shall not steal. Verse number 11. Don't steal from them. We know what that is, don't we? All right. <laughs> Neither deal falsely. 
sleep? We know what that is, don't we? Saying, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it, but have no intention to do it. This line, straight up line. Amen. Deceiving. Okay, then he says he breaks down plenty. Neither lie one to another. Don't do it. Amen. The last time you told a lie should be the last time. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no, that's what he said. Somebody write, won't even write that down for me. <laughs> funny. All right. Uh, verse number 12. And ye shall not swear by my name, what? Falsely. Falsely. Don't swear by God. Amen. He said, don't take the name of the Lord God, what? In vain. In vain. Amen. Don't swear by my name. Don't swear by heaven or earth. Jesus added, he said, yea, yo, yea be yea, and your nay be nay. Amen? It means this. If you're going to uh, uh, talk to somebody and enter into an agreement with them, just say, yeah, I'm going to do it, or no, I'm not going to do it. Or, yeah, I'm telling you the truth, or no, I'm not telling you the truth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Huh? Don't, don't, don't be trying to Deal with people falsely. Amen? Yeah. Notice then. Uh, verse 13. And he says, Thou shalt not defraud thy what? Nay. In other words, that if you owe it to the individual, give it to them. If you owe it to the individual, give it to them. If they've done work for you, and you promise to give them such and such, give it. They go over to your house, they leave something at your house that you want, and they say, bring it back. Bring it, bring it to church. Bring it. And you intentionally leave it. That's defrauding the individual because you want it. That's bad. Amen? <laughs> you go out of town, well, somebody come from, to your house from out of town. <laughs> All right, let me move on. Thank you, Jesus. But, but give people stuff back. Amen? If, if you say you're going to do it, and they do what they said they're going to do for you, do it. Amen? Keep the peace. Am I right? Amen. My God. Then, 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 then you wonder why they got an attitude with you. You, you say, well, so-and-so, they, they baby, they petty. They're not talking to me no more. You know, but you're not, you're not realizing what you did. Amen? To cause that. You follow me? All right. Let's move on. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The, the wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee at all night until the morning. When the individual completes the job, give them the money. Pay them. Amen? Don't rob them. All right? Verse 14. Notice what it says. Thou shalt not what? Curse the death. People that have defects, disabilities. Uh, don't curse them. They can't help it. Am I right? Don't be talking about blind people. Huh? People that walk with a limp, can't walk. Huh? Got a stutter. Thank you. Don't make, don't make fun of people. Some folks is cockeyed. Huh? Yeah, I just travel over there. <laughs> they looking at you. They all over there know me. <laughs> Right. They 
they can happen, I'm sure they have their eyes going in the right direction. Don't make fun of people. Amen? God don't like that. Amen? Notice what he said. Uh, do not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind. Got blind folk walking around and you, you, you tripping them up. <laughs> that ain't good. That ain't good. And, and it's a shame because God had to write it in the Bible. See, folk got to be taught how to treat people right. Amen? Think about it. God does not, I know we're laughing about this, but God does not just put words in the Bible just to fill up pages. He does it for a reason. Amen? If we weren't taught it, we'd do it. Right? So notice what he said. I got to finish up here. <laughs> Don't put a stumbling block before blind folk. Uh, but thou shalt what? Fear thy God. Reverence God. I reverence God's word. Amen? Esteem it high. Let, let God's word be the end of all debate. In other words, you wondering whether or not you should or you shouldn't, you find it in the word of God and it tells you what you should or should not do. Let that be your answer. Don't go no further. Amen? That's what reverence means. That God's word is the final answer. It's the only answer. My God. All right? Notice what he says. Uh, but fear the Lord thy God, I am the Lord. Verse 15. What does it say? You should do no what? Un unrighteous judgment. Unrighteous judgment means that 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 you shall not do or make this uh, judgments, final decisions that are against God's word, that are unrighteous, bad judgments, bad decisions. Somebody stole from you, and because you're mad at them, you stop helping. Them. You stop seeing about it. That's an unrighteous judgment. Why is that an unrighteous judgment? Because God tells you, never stop loving people. Right? Am I right? Yeah. And he says, love your enemies. Doesn't he? Yeah. He said, do good to those that hate you and despitefully use you. Am I right? And he said that. Yeah. Hallelujah. So it's an unrighteous judgment uh, that, 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 that I would stop because they did. That's huge, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. That's what I'm saying. That's why we got to be taught. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because we can't lead to our own understanding. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And I'm giving you nothing but straight word. Hallelujah. Now notice what he says. Uh, ye shall do no unrighteous judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor and honor the person of the mighty. Meaning this. Just because a person is poor, you stop helping them. Just because you got a choice. All right, I got this poor joker here and I got this rich, wow, young guy here. Which one is going to benefit me the most? Huh? Then I have respect the person to the rich person because I think that they're going to help me the most. You follow me? James bring that out in his epistle. Talking about you, uh, uh, a rich person comes into your sanctuary, you put them on your high seat. A poor person comes into your sanctuary, you don't even see him, you put him under the seat. He said, don't have respect to a person like that. Treat everybody alike. Treat everybody the same. Amen? Honor all men. You follow me? 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's a blessing in it, believe me. I know it. Christian Ministries knows it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All right. What verse we in? 16? Okay, 15. The end it? All right, let me read 15 all over again. Uh, Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness thou shalt judge thy name. Amen? Keep things above board. Uh, judge people according to God's word. Amen? Now this judgment here isn't talking about heaven or hell. It's talking about your actions toward them. Amen? It's talking about your actions toward the individual. You follow me? Remember, we got a moral obligation and a social obligation. <laughs> All right. Uh, verse 17. Oh, 16. Thank you. He says, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer. That means gossiper. Don't be a gossiper. I'm bearing your tail. <laughs> Upon the people. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. When it says stand against the blood of thy neighbor, it's, it's talking about uh, 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 being, if you see a fight going on, you know, it ain't telling you to jump in, but it's telling you don't forget, don't forsake your neighbor. Help them out. Don't just sit idly by while your neighbor is, is, is being abused, being hurt. Do something. You see something, say something. They got that from God. That's a God principle. Follow me? Hallelujah. This, this is how we love our neighbor. All right? What's it say? Uh, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt not anywise rebuke thy neighbor. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. All right? So this is saying, remember I said we got a, 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 a moral and a social obligation. Alright? So he's saying, if you see your neighbor doing wrong, correct them. Say something. Help to straighten them out. In order for you to do that, you've got to love them. People you love, you help. Am I right? Got kind of quiet in here. Notice what it says. Thou shalt not hate thy brother. So if you don't hate him, you what? Love him. Don't hate him in your heart. Thou shalt not, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy brother. Notice what it says. Thou shalt in any wise, in any circumstance, or in any situation, Rebuke thy brother, thy neighbor. Straighten them out in anything. That's a responsibility, ain't it? If I see you doing something wrong, I should say something. If you see me doing something wrong, you should say something. If you see somebody else doing something wrong, you should say something. Amen? And suffer not sin upon them. That means, that means hopefully they will repent and turn. Wow, it's deep. Uh, verse 18, what does it say? Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor 
as thyself, I am God. This is where Jesus got his answer. Amen? Notice what he said. Thou shalt not avenge nor uh, bear grudge against thy people or the children of thy people. Meaning this, if your, people, if your neighbor do you wrong, Jesus taught it this way, turn the other cheek. Now that doesn't mean you don't defend yourself. He says don't get revenge. That's what that scripture means, turning the other cheek. It doesn't mean you sit there and let somebody beat you down. That, that's not what that scripture means. People have misinterpreted that scripture. But uh, that scripture means that you don't seek revenge on an individual. That's what is being taught here. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge. They've done you wrong. You don't hold a grudge. You forgive them. You let it go. That takes love, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Now, I just got uh, two more scriptures I want y'all to go to. Um, go to uh, Romans. Well, one more scripture. Romans. I'm going to tie this in. Romans chapter 13. Romans 13. And verse number 9. Now, when the Old Testament talks about loving your neighbor, uh, uh, it talked about loving them that were of your household, in your tribe. Amen? Of your faith. But when Jesus talked about it in the Good Samaritan, when they asked him, who is my neighbor? And Jesus uh, put it upon a Samaritan. And that would have shocked the Jews because they hated the Samaritans because they were half breed Found me? So what Jesus was trying to teach them was that, that, that loving your neighbor goes beyond your circle your family, but loving everybody from everywhere. That's your neighbor. Amen? That's what we're teaching here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Through the help of the Holy Ghost. Now, Romans chapter 13 and verse number 9. Do you have it? Let's start with verse 8. I like that. It says, Owe no man anything. And you know what that scripture right there is saying? Literally saying, pay your debts. You can have a credit card and that bill come due. The Bible says, Owe nothing. So you pay the debt. Pay what you owe. Once you pay what you owe, you don't owe nothing else until next month. Follow me? Pay your light bill. Pay your gas bill. Amen? Pay your rent. Follow me? Bible got to answer to all things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, this, I should turn this into a saint's meeting. Notice what it says. Owe no man anything but what? Love one another. Amen? Only thing I should owe you, remember, is love. And remember, I said love was a what? Obligation. Further bears evidence that love is a what? Obligation. Obligation. I owe it to you. Amen. I'm obligated to show you this, show you love. I'm obligated to treat you right. I'm obligated to hold the door for you. You follow me? It's good stuff. Notice, owe no man nothing but love one another, for he that loveth another 
fulfilleth what? Uh, when you love your brother or your sister, when I say your brother or sister, I'm talking about mankind, including your enemies, you fulfill God's law. Notice what he says. Verse 9 says what? For this thou shalt what? Not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any uh, other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt what? Love thy neighbor as what? Thyself. So, me loving you is based on what God teaches us. You loving me is based on what God has written, what he teaches us. Y'all with me? All right, let's go over here to Matthew chapter number five. I got three more minutes. Matthew number five. Hallelujah. Matthew number five and verse 43. Matthew number five and verse 43. My God, my God. I, think, I think I need to spend another week on this. All right. Matthew number 5 and verse 43. If you haven't said amen. Amen. Jesus said, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. That's an Old Testament scripture. Notice. But I say unto you, Love your enemy. Bless them that what? Curse you. Do good to them that what? Hate you. And pray for them that what? Despitefully use you and persecute you. They that, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust for if ye love them which love you what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same but if you salute your brother only uh, what do you more than others? Do not the publicans so? But notice what Jesus says. Be ye therefore what? Mature. Perfect. Even as your Father, which is in heaven, is what? Mature and perfect. Love the way God loves. Amen? Hallelujah. My God. So we just taught you here today, as we conclude uh, our Bible study, we taught you here today what it means, what it means to love the Lord your God, and what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. And we want to thank God for those that have tuned in with us on today. Uh, if you've got anything out of the lesson, just type it there in the comment sections so everybody else can see it, but more so I can see it so I know that you're out there listening and that you received of this word. Also, you have an opportunity to give through our tithing and uh, we encourage you to give to help and to support the ministry. May God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.